morning. I am Reverend Sandra Hansel Drover, the rector of the Anglican Church of the Advent in Colwood and Langford, part of the Diocese of British Columbia, the Diocese of Islands and Inlets. And I welcome you to this virtual worship experience that the Reverend Paul and I have uh, put together for you this morning. It is a brand new experience for us and we welcome your feedback on uh, how this experience is for you. If this format works for you, if this uh, idea of virtual worship works for you in this time of uncertainty. It is uh, my honor to uh, offer this to you with Paul and also the uh, Hansel Drover guys who have come along today to do our music. And just a note about the music, I did speak with our music director, Nell, who is still on her March break in Oliver and not able to be with us at this time of this recording. But if we go forward with this worship experience, this virtual worship experience, she will be with us as part of your worship team in this time of uncertainty. So I invite you as we prepare our hearts, our minds, our very selves, our very being for worship to come. Gather with us, gather with us as the people of God scattered in a church without walls. My friends, as we meet together, we begin by remembering the Lekwungen speaking people on whose traditional land we now gather in gratitude. We acknowledge their story and their stewardship, the land and water, the plants and animals through the many generations. As we meet together, we remember those who have called this place their home in recent years, the community of faith known as Church of the Advent, whose joyful spirit embraces us. Now let us greet one another with words and signs of welcome. Scripture shares with us, I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Those who follow me will have the light of life. Our opening hymn, hymn number three in common praise, Morning Has Broken. My friends, please join with me as we offer God's grace to one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Our penitential right. We gather today recognizing that this is a, the sacred journey is one that we live into as individuals and as communities. In love. We are called to be co-creators with God, 
to be truth tellers, reconcilers, and healers. But our failures and shortcomings often leave us keenly aware of what seems an unbridgeable distance from the mystery and the promise of holy relationship. In Christ, God bridges the distance and reaches out to us across time and space. The season of Lent invites us to reflect on those places in us that are broken, places where we are in need of God's love poured out. We are called to reflect on those places in our relationship with our communities where there is a brokenness and a need for God's reconciling love. And we are called to reflect on our world and the places where there is brokenness and a need for a new and right relationship. As we reflect, we do so with contrite but hopeful hearts, trusting in God's steadfast love and infinite mercy. Forgive us when we encounter ourselves with thoughts of worthlessness, with feelings of anger, ignoring our own needs, our values, and our dreams. Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison. Forgive us when we encounter each other with thoughts of worthlessness, with feelings of anger, ignoring each other's needs, values, and dreams. Christe or Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison. Forgive us when we encounter you, O God, with thoughts of worthlessness, with feelings of anger, ignoring our needs, values, and dreams, and your wish for us as the people of God. Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison. Through the cross of Christ, God have mercy upon you, pardon you, and set you free. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. God strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The word of Christ dwell in us richly. Let us take the opportunity to offer the prayer that collects all of our prayers together this day. Holy God, in, in Jesus Christ, Christ you reveal yourself to the world. Even when we are blind to your grace, open our eyes to see your transforming love in our midst, so that we may see your world anew through Jesus Christ, the Savior, who has shown compassion. Amen. Our first reading for this fourth Sunday in Lent is from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. 
Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, for the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all of your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him. For we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ready and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. For the Word of God is Scripture. For the Word of God is amongst us. For the Word of God is within us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. A reading from the book of Ephesians. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of the light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention which such people do secretly. But everything is exposed by the light that becomes visible. For everything that, be that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, arise from the dead, for Christ will shine on you. For the word of God is scripture, for the word of God is among us. For the word of God is within us. Thanks. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's, God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam 
which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes that were opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been born blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are the disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of the person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? 
Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into the world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not all blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would, have, you would not have sinned. But now that you say, we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Loving Creator, you do not wish for any of us to suffer. In this time of uncertainty and distress, open the words of Holy Scripture that we may find a place of comfort and grace as we face the weeks and the months ahead. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, our Shepherd, and our Friend. Amen. Now most of you are familiar with the words of the 23rd, 23rd Psalm. You know how this goes. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along the right pathways for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no ill, because you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You have spread a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you have anointed my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. These are words of comfort and words of strength, words which stand as a counterpoint to the feelings of uncertainty that we find ourselves caught up in in this present time. In our Gospel reading for the fourth Sunday in Lent, we find Jesus doing the work for which he has been sent by the Creator. In John chapter 9, verses 1 to 41, we find Jesus moving through the countryside. It is shortly after he has left the people of Samaria and the woman who he encountered at the well. And now Jesus is questioned by his disciples as to who is to blame for this blind man being blind. Was it something that his parents did? A sin or sins that resulted in this disease being visited upon this person? Or was the man's own failing in the eyes of God the result of his infirmity. Jesus comes to the blind man and does not question him about anything. The man is straightaway healed of his infirmity. For this man, Jesus is all about healing and finding no blame. He is quick to correct the disciples for their misunderstanding about the relationship our Creator has with all of humankind. No one was to blame for this man's infirmity, and we do not need to try and explain the misfortune that, this, that has befallen this blind man from birth, any more than we need to find someone to blame for the COVID-19 virus, which is impacting humankind on this global scale. On Tuesday of this past week, the President of the United States stated that this was a Chinese virus, but is he correct? In my thinking, it's not for any of us, from the person on the street to the daughters and sons who have to sit by and watch their family members, some of them who are elderly and infirm, 
suffer, and in some cases die, right up to the leaders of nations, to put blame upon any other person, nation, or group for this pandemic. Blaming has no place in this situation. What we all need to do is to listen to the experts from science and medicine, and to follow the directives of our government leaders, and not to blame them because some people have to self-isolate. The same goes for our church. Our church leaders are not to blame for the fact that it is prudent for our synod to be proactive in the closing down of our facilities long in advance of this pandemic taking hold in our communities. And why should we blame those leaders and those charged with keeping us all safe? They are only doing what they have been legislated to do. To this end, I want to make it clear to you that this decision, these decisions have been made to this point, and probably many more decisions which will need to be taken, are for the best, for the best of all of us. Reverend Sander and I and our pastoral care team are prepared to maintain a pastoral connection through social media and by use of the telephone with all of our congregational members until we see this time of distress reach an end. Then and only then will we once again gather as God's people at the Church of the Advent. In our Gospel reading for today, Jesus finds a way of rewiring people's assumptions about how things appear to happen for this blind man. You see, our assumptions support the norms that we rely on throughout life and to help us make sense out of the things that we do. When the blind man first encounters Jesus, it is not because he sees Jesus coming. Rather, it is through his sense of hearing that he first meets the one who is known as the Son of God, Son of Man. When the blind man receives his sight, he gains much more than the ability to see with his eyes. He also receives a new sense of relationship with the Creator. In the presence of the gathering crowds, the Pharisees question the man over and over again as to who it is that has did, that has did this for him. Each time the man is questioned by the Pharisees, who are trying to find a way to blame Jesus, the man responds with answers which do not lay blame, but rather offer testimony to the power of God working through the person of Jesus Christ. His testimony results in the man being driven out of, the, out of that place. When Jesus finds the man for a second time, the man comes to realize that Jesus is the Son of Man, the embodiment of the divine, and he worships God in Jesus. Jesus has offered abundant life to the man who has been blind, and more than that, a relationship with the divine something that no one else can offer to him. Last week we read about the woman at the well and how her encounter with Jesus brought her into a new relationship with the Creator. Like the woman at the well, the man who has been blind finds that same relationship with the Divine through Jesus. In this new relationship there is no blaming because there is no question but what anyone did to cause this disease to be visited upon anyone else. The man did not sin, nor did his parents. Therefore, there is no blame, period. As Christians, we are at our worst when we try to lay blame on anyone for this pandemic, that which is affecting us globally. We are at our best when we pattern our actions to be as Jesus would be in this time. We need to work together with all of God's children of every race, of every creed, and every station in life to eradicate the injustices, to extend love to all, and to be compassionate to 
towards each other. That way we will be putting ourselves on the side of healing and finding a way for us all through this present time of suffering. What is important is that we as God's hands and feet are in this present time and that God is working in and through us. So I ask you to follow the directives given by those charged with the well-being of us all. Exercise social distancing. Self-isolate when requested. Don't hoard items of food, toiletries, or medicines. Look out for each other and be prepared for the time of uncertainty to continue, possibly into the summer months and beyond. We all need to exercise an abundance of caution. God has not abandoned us. We need to maintain ourselves in prayer for our own well-being, for the well-being of each other, and for all humanity. God has not stopped listening, nor has he stopped providing for his sheep. Remember, he is the Good Shepherd. Remember the words of the 23rd Psalm I shared with you at the beginning. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God is with us through this present time. Stay strong and have faith. We will one day again worship together in this one place, for we all share in God's divine presence. Amen. My friends, let us take the opportunity to share our statement of faith through the affirmation of faith as found in your order of worship. You, O oh God, are our supreme, supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. We have also been with us. You are God. You, O oh God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are God. We worship you. My friends, I invite you to take the position of prayer that speaks to your piety. Even if you are at home, if you are in an office, if you are sitting in your car right now, I invite you to bow your heads, be seated, stand, kneel, well, however you prepare yourself to come before God in prayer. My brothers and sisters, reconciled to God by the mercy of Christ, we pray with confidence for the needs of the church and the world. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church throughout the world. And today we pray for the Hong Kong Sheng Kong Hoi. We pray for Logan, our bishop, for myself as your rector, for Paul, our associate priest. We offer prayer today for St. Philip's in Oak Bay and the territory of the people of the Anglican Church in Canada. And in our own Selkirk region, we offer prayer for St. Peter's in Lake Hill. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, a church that gathers without walls, a church 
of the bewildered, a church that still seeks to find its mission in this new way of being church. That in faithful witness, it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those who are preparing and have been preparing for baptism for their teachers, their sponsors, their families. We pray for the uncertainty of the timing of that blessed sacrament in their lives. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the world. For peace in a world that is troubled. For peace in a world that is struggling. For peace in a world crying for grace. That a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who are in any sort of suffering today, we offer prayer for those who have asked us to pray for them. For Joan and Maureen, for Elmer and Alice, Lucy, Barb, Peter, Mike, Rob, Peggy, and Carol Ann. We also pray for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger. We pray for those who are told to self-isolate who have no home. We pray for those who are asked to keep two weeks of groceries and they hunger. We pray for all those who are asked to quarantine who live in refugee camps. We pray for our overburdened health care system and those who live in parts of our world that do not have a reliable health care system. For all who are struggling to make it to their home communities, their home countries, to be in a place where they feel safe and protected. We pray, we pray deeply and wholeheartedly that they may be relieved and find the grace and mercy. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. And as we gather in prayer, we offer prayers of thanksgiving, but also continued prayers of strength and hope for all those who continue to work We offer prayers for our healthcare workers, those who work in the healthcare system, our custodians, our nurses, our LPNs, our surgeons, our respiratory therapists, our physiotherapist. We pray for all those who care for our elderly and vulnerable in long-term care facilities. We offer prayer for those who work in our grocery stores, our corner stores, our gas stations. We pray for those who deliver goods and services. We pray for our truck drivers. But as we offer all of them in prayer, 
We also acknowledge those who have lost their livelihoods, whose livelihoods have been suspended. We offer prayer for those who are unsure of what the next month will mean for them as individuals and them as families. We pray for grace, grace to amend our lives, grace to care for one another, to share the blessings that enrich our lives as we further the reign of God. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Through Christ, you make us a new creation, O God. For with Christ, we pass from sin to the new life of grace. Accept our prayers in the warm embrace of your compassion and welcome all people to the festive banquet of your table, where we may rejoice in your love and celebrate the inheritance you have given us. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For those of you who are watching from whatever device you're watching on, it has just occurred to me that I didn't add the Lord's Prayer in our worship service. I'll fix that for next week. Think we can wing a Lord's Prayer, Paul? I think so. Gathering all of our prayers and praises into one, we'll let us pray as our Savior Christ has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be, be thy name, thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My friends, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, those whom you love, those whom you find hard to love, this day and always. Amen. Amen. Please enjoy our commissioning hymn, hymn number 505, Be Thou My Vision. Be thou 